Glad that you can join us for our worship service this morning. And welcome to all, both on Zoom and Facebook. We're glad you're here. I have just uh, just a few announcements, uh, or actually, uh, just yeah, just a few um, for this week. <clears throat> The Christian Ed um, Board will be meeting tomorrow night um, at 7 o'clock, and that information has been sent out already. The newsletter will be coming out today, uh, and we'll have some more information and in that about uh, our goal to have in-person worship at the church on the 28th. So that's still on track. Um, we've the subcommittee and uh, some other committees are meeting, and we are trying to figure out how to to make all of that happen and to organize it such that uh, for those who would like to be uh, to worship in person can be there and be safe, and for those online to continue to see the service online. So we'll be we'll be working on that in the next uh, coming weeks to make all of that happen. And we're doing this slowly, so we're slowly beginning to meet and to just to see um, to see how it works and to, to adjust as we need. We're also being mindful of what's going on both in the state, uh, in, the, in the county, in the state, in the valley, um, and in the rest of the world. So, um, but it is our current goal to to meet in person on the on the twenty eighth. Uh, that that Sunday, uh, we are planning on um, uh, um, Dan and uh, Debbie will be uh, providing music for that Sunday, and the following Sunday, which um, will be the first Sunday in July, we hope to have the organ playing and um, the the sound reaching the the tent where we're at. So. Uh, just to look forward to those two things. Um, and that first Sunday will probably be a little strange, a little awkward. There'll be more things to adjust <laughs> to and adapt to. So we ask for your patience and, and all of that as we, as we shift and change for the needs of the moment. That's all I have for announcements. Maybe we can open up um, for any announcements that probably am probably missing. Uh, Sean? Yes. It, um, <clears throat> this is the month that missions um, usually speaks to uh, one great hour of sharing. And uh, we have received um, a letter from the um, World Relief Office saying that uh, we are doing the one great hour of sharing and because of last year's uh, contributions they were able to get um, relief out to people in the United States and Puerto Rico uh, due to that needed it due to COVID-19. They also I uh, want to be respectful that people are not able to do financially what they have been able to do in the past. So they're asking if it is financially possible, please give to one great hour of sharing because they, it's going to be ongoing um, assistance for some time. But recognizing that it's not... Um, that everyone isn't able to. They ask that people would say prayers uh, for the one great hour of sharing and the people that they are going to help. Hmm. Thank you, Alana. And, and in contributing to that, if you just want to add that in your memo line of your check or in a memo, we will make sure it gets to the right place. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Any other announcements? Well, welcome everyone. I'm just now seeing everyone that's here. 
It's good to see you all and let us begin our worship this morning with our opening music. Let's uh, join together. Debbie is going to, to read the leader part, and then if we, as the people, can read the people part. Yay. Jesus Christ summons us to answer God's call of mercy. Christ gathers us, gathers us, gives us power, gives us power to be healed to heal. and to heal. And to heal. And to heal, to be forgiven and to forgive, to be freed from sin, set others free, to tell one another and the world. God's, God's presence, presence is at hand. Is at hand. Let, Let us worship God. Worship. Let us join together in our invocation this morning. O Holy One, who we so often do not recognize, come into our midst and make your presence known. Renew our strength refresh our imaginations, retool our weary efforts to carry your peace into the world. Amaze us with your power to make all things new. And let us face your world with curiosity and hope Be with us during this time of worship. May we feel your presence, your spirit's power and creativity and inspiration. May as we gather here this morning know your grace and freely share it with our world. 
We pray this in your name, in Christ's name, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is our time that we can share with one another our prayers for our lives, for those that we love, for for our world. What are the prayers that you would like to share with one another this morning? Sean? Yes. Um, Heidi Ford let me know that uh, Nate's birthday is today and he is 20 years old and that Isabel uh, graduated from college. Woo. That's wonderful. Yeah, if you want, if you, whenever you want to celebrate, just do the little jazz hands. I like that. Okay, uh, Hunter, I see that you have your hands raised. And my mom's birthday yesterday, and we just both like today. Your mom's was yesterday, and who's this today? Um, yes, sir, Pastor Sean. Rita, Rita Calker was today. Rita's, Rita's is today. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Hunter. Yeah, you're welcome, Pastor did you, Sean. Did you give your mom a birthday gift? Um, yes. Yeah? Did you give her a hug and a kiss, I hope? Um, yes, sir, Pastor Sean. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other birthdays? So we have Rita and Karen's. Any others? Uh, Peggy? Boris is coming up this week. He'll be plenty nine again. Plenty nine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, other birthdays? Ooh, Kyle Kramer is tomorrow. Kyle Kramer is tomorrow. Wonderful. Okay, well, let's uh, do jazz hands for birthdays. Yes. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Others, uh, things you're grateful for, where you've seen God in the world. Yes, Peggy. First, and I had a wonderful 10th anniversary last weekend, driving up through the islands of Lake Champlain. It was absolutely gorgeous. Congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I see Eliana out there. Oh, yes. Eliana, welcome. Huh? Other prayers that you would like for one another, for our world? Sean. Yes. Ms. Margaret, I have two. Um, a very good friend of mine I just talked with yesterday. Her husband passed away last month. Um, and so I would like prayers for Vicki, um, and, uh, just another friend whose, um, mother is in very critical condition. Okay. Thank you. Sean, this is Julie. Hi, Julie. I'd like, uh, pr continued prayers for Crawford and I. Um, unfortunately his, uh, so far, we don't know a lot, but it's, they're not satisfied with what they're seeing. And so the, there are 12 doctors at Dana-Farber that are putting their heads together and they're trying to come up with a new uh, plan. Okay. And we should know more this coming week about that. Um, we do have celebrations. He's on the golf course right now Yay. in a tournament, which is one of his favorite things to do. Uh -huh. And we are enjoying our new little puppy, which I'll show you at some point. She's having a nap right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> but Amy is a delight. I know Marilyn wants to see Amy, so I'll 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 well, drag her out from under the chair. Frankly, we all want to see Amy. Oh, okay. 
And I'm so happy to know that Muriel is home. Oh, good. What yeah. a celebration. Hey. That's a mirror, so I was showing up. So. Oh. I also ask for prayers, uh, everyone, for Tom. Uh, Crawford's sister's husband, Tom, has his second chemo treatment tomorrow. Oh, boy. Okay. So prayers for Tom and for you, Merle Marie. How's the girl come downstairs? Uh, she's here. Thank you, you, Julie. I'll read it. She reads it. I, um, I would just like to say thank you to everyone who's reached out to Brian and I um, over the last week and a half or so, and everyone who's made or given us treats. Um, we've been very well fed, and I appreciate that very much because walking and cooking in the kitchen is very hard for me right now, so I appreciate that. It's been a burden that we haven't had to worry about this week, so thank you to everyone who helped us through this time. You're welcome. Um, Sean? Yes. Yes. Eliana drew um, and colored in a scripture that she learned this morning. And so she wanted to show that she has done it. Oh, could you hold it a little closer? It's, is it going to seem backwards to you? No, it's perfect. It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. It's a reminder for all of us to trust in the Lord and not lean onto our own understanding. And so she's learning that as well as we all do this. That should be framed. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Sean? Yes. I would like to celebrate the creativity of Kennett High School and the superintendent and thanks to Ben Wilcox uh, for the uh, in wonderful, wonderful uh, celebration of commencement for all the kids going up the uh, lift to the top of Cranmore. I saw some of it on Facebook. It's really great. Mm. Yes, we lift up and celebrate our graduates this year. Both high school and going in the, from elementary school and junior high to high school, all of those milestones and events from college and grad school. I'm just making sure I'm not missing anyone. It's funny watching everybody's faces. Everybody's scanning. <laughs> oh. Well, thanks to this modern technology, we are able to share with one another our prayers and our thanksgivings. Let's join together in prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. Oh, holy one. You are greater than our understanding. And there, there are times when we have, in our minds, tried to shrink you down. We can make you and your work in our world very small. We can make you, in fact, so small, it's the very thoughts that we're thinking. That somehow we have you in our pockets and that you are bending to our plans and our wheel, 
well. And sometimes that's out of fear. Sometimes it comes from a place of compassion. It comes from a place of trying to organize our world and and to provide structure when we fear chaos. We are reminded, O oh Lord, that you are vast, that you are a mystery, that you are larger than our problems. When we look at night, at the vastness of the stars, we only get a brief sliver of understanding of your majesty and your you as God. You are greater than our understanding. And, and so we place our trust in you and even, even in your grandeur, even in your infinity, you who are beyond time and place, You care about us. Your love has been bestowed upon all people. Your grace, much larger, more expansive than we can ever imagine. We see, O oh Lord, places in our lives that scare us. We have concern for loved ones. We we long for your peace. We would like, O oh Lord, for there to be justice. For your understanding and desire for humanity to take place in our world. We trust in you, O oh Lord. We place our trust in your goodness, in your justice, in your mercy. We trust that you will be working in the lives of our loved ones. We trust that you are present with us in our time of need. We trust that you are working in our world. We trust that we can live out your grace, that we can put the hands and feet and actions that you showed us through Christ, to put those actions at work in our world. We rely on you, O oh Lord, to show us the way. We rely on you when we are uncomfortable and in and, and a place of growing. We rely on you to show a path where there just doesn't seem to be a path. We rely on you to be conduits, conduits of your 
of your grace and love in this world. Help us, O Lord, to participate in your kingdom and to realize that it is a kingdom without borders. It is your kingdom that is greater than we can imagine. It is what we hope for and yearn for. And let us be a part of bringing your kingdom to our world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture passage comes from Matthew chapter 9. 35 and then to chapter 10, 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Jesus called the twelve his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip, and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So I'm wondering, um, the last time you have really looked at someone, I don't know if you think about it, but you can go a whole day with the person that you live with, husband, wife, spouse, partner, son, daughter. You can go a whole day without really looking at someone. You can almost go a whole week without looking into their eyes. When, when was the last time that you looked in, into somebody's eyes for more than a microsecond? Like, you know, sometimes we look in people's eyes and we notice they're looking and we look away really quick. Even if it's somebody that we've been with for years and years.
It's so fascinating. And I don't, I don't know if you've ever done an exercise where you look in somebody's eyes for a minute. It freaks people out. I've done it before as a group. A few years ago, uh, when I went to a um, meeting called the Death Cafe, which is just a meeting where you talk about death. It's, it's a conversation about dying and it always turns to discussion about living as well. It's, and then I have subsequently run those meetings with my friend Aaron. In that particular meeting that I went to, I was in Portland. We wanted to go and see what the meeting was about. And so I drove over to Portland, Portland Library. I was in a tiny room with 20 people. We were sitting side by each with each other. And I knew no one in the room. And the presenter asked us to um, imagine that we were going to die within three minutes and we couldn't speak to one another. We had to turn to our partner and all we could do is to just look at each other. Well, yeah, I know what you're thinking. It, it was an intense experience. And I thought it was awkward at first. And then I, I can still remember the woman's face that I looked into for th three minutes and the thoughts that came through my mind and wondering what her life had been like up until that point. And of course we were imagining that we were dying in three minutes. And so I just really looked at her and appreciated her and for who she was. And I found it was just such a powerful exercise because we both brought comfort with for each other without touching each other, without, you know, without comforting words, without asking questions. We just looked at each other. And of course we talked afterwards. And it was interesting because we both felt seen in that moment. And that's what I want us to think about this morning is actual seeing people, being curious about people. In the passage that we read this morning, uh, prior to the passage in, in chapter 9, Jesus, the chapter 9 is about Jesus healing people. And when we get to our particular passage for the lectionary this morning, the verse 35 and 36, Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. And it struck me that really it was in the seeing of the crowds, really seeing the crowds that Jesus had compassion. He really saw what they were going through. He saw that they were, that they were harassed and helpless. They were like a sheep without a shepherd. And as I read the Gospels, I really notice that, that Jesus truly sees people. Sees beyond the exterior. 
He takes the time to notice and look. It seems that we are at a time where we are not seeing each other. I mean, it's, um, it can be subtle. We put kind of layers on people with our assumptions. Imagine if you will, you're um, driving and you see a car with a bumper sticker that really sets you off. And suddenly you make up a whole story as to what that person, who that person is and what they're about. I do it. It's not even a bumper sticker. That's when people express views. Um, it can be anything, I mean, uh, any form, and both in our families and outside our families. But it seems to be more and more prevalent these days, you know? Are you wearing a mask or are you not wearing a mask? And in doing that, we create people as objects. They no longer become people, but they become an ideal. I am interested in this business of Jesus calling his disciples. I mean, maybe you learned uh, in, uh, if, if you grew up in the church, maybe you learned the disciples name, maybe you sang a song. We had, for some reason, these little bracelets that had these little charms of all the disciples. And that's how I learned uh, the names. And we're like, yeah, Jesus, you know, I just always thought, yeah, Jesus and his posse, right, his dudes. Um, and then there, of course, the, 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 the women outside of the, the 12 disciples and all the supporters but, you know, the 12 disciples, it, like, it just feels like, oh, everything was kind of harmonious, and of course, until Judas, and then that, you know, but, but Judas was kind of the oddball, and, you know. But it really is strange when you look at who Jesus called to be his disciples and the flaws that they had. Of course, we know that Peter denies Jesus three times, we also know that Judas will betray him. We know that two of the disciples had completely different political views and not just a little, a little, um, a little disagreement. Because Matthew was a tax collector who collected taxes for the Roman government, which by some religious measure, measures would consider him idolatrous. Um, and, and it was not, a, as we read in the Gospels, was not one of the professions that was really looked up by many of the Jews. And then we're told, we read that there was Simon the Zealot. And for the Zealots wanted to kick out the pagan Romans because they were pagans and because they were um, controlling Israel, and they believed that there should be a king of Israel beholding to none. 
And of course we have Thomas. And of course we have the disciples. Right after the Lord's Supper, the disciples are arguing over who is going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. So Jesus entrusted this to proclaim the kingdom of God is near to a group of ragtag disciples. And even in this moment that we're thinking about, Judas himself is given the task with the other disciples to proclaim the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, I think the disciples could have seen each other as objects. They could have. And, and if Jesus had seen them, I don't know, as objects, I don't think that he would have gathered those 12 together. Jesus saw something in each one of those disciples something that did not make human sense. There was a bigger plan, obviously, at work. And Jesus truly saw the disciples, each of them, saw his followers as people. When we don't see people as people, we see them as, as objects. And, and, and sometimes it's very blatant. It's very blatant when we, when we see that, it, um, that a person is, when we see people act as a person is not a person, complete disregard for them and for their humanity. But we do it in subtle ways as well, you and I. We treat, when we treat people as kind of a vehicle to achieve our own objectives, we're treating people as objects. When we see a person as an obstacle that is in our way, we are treating them as objects. Those, that way, that objective could be a good objective. But when we treat people as an object to get to where we're going or to move them because they're causing problems, we're treating them as objects. We treat people as objects when we, tr when we treat them as irrelevant, that they can be ignored. When we have this mindset, we, we are blind to what others need. And really all we see is what frustrates us about them a problem to solve, if we could just solve them as a problem, that's treating people as objects. And this can appear in our primary relationships, it can appear in our friendships, it can appear systemically in our society when people are not people but a problem to be solved an object to be moved a vehicle to achieve an objective and it creates this kind of feedback loop when i choose to see people as an object i become invested in seeing them poorly 
When I see a person as an object, I do not see them as a full human being. I do not see their full potential. And I treat them that way. And that invites them to treat me as an object in response. And then when I feel like I'm being treated like an object, that gives me the justification to continue to treat them as an object. And I end up seeing them as a problem. I see the very person that I love as a problem and not as a human being. Do we really believe that God so loved the world? And do we, do we see people with Jesus' compassion? He saw the crowd and he had compassion. He saw the blind man and had compassion. He saw the woman at the well and had compassion. He saw Mary Magdalene and had compassion. He saw that Peter would betray him and had compassion. My call for us this morning is to see people as people, to see people as as people who matter, who matter as much as I do. And when I see a person before me, I take into account their needs, their challenges, their objectives. And I see my needs. And when I see a person, we can work together. When I see people as people, I have compassion. Jesus sends his disciples out he says to proclaim that the kingdom of heaven has come near, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. Freely you have received and freely give. And I think that there is those last, that last sentence in that is the key to the first part of that. It's not heal the sick to put up, oh, healed another one, healed another one, healed another one. It's seeing people who are hurting like lepers who are outside the community and the borders and ostracized, it's seeing them as people because we're reminded that we have been given God's grace. We have been seen by God as a person. We have been given grace We were reminded that in, in 1 Corinthians 13 that we can have the power to heal, we can have the power and faith to move mountains, but we don't have love. If we're not seeing the person in front of us, it doesn't amount to anything. I believe as a human desire 
we want to be seen and once we're seen we want to be known and once we're known we want to be loved everyone every damn one of us and to know that we are seen and loved and known by God and the grace has been freely given freely we have received so let us freely give and somehow we make it out to be like I need my slice of the pie For some reason, this past week, I've been thinking about slices of pie. Like, I, I want my slice of pie. I need my slice of pie. I deserve my slice of pie. And it struck me in this passage that the pie is a lot bigger than we thought. <laughs> and quite frankly, with God, there's more than one pie. There is an abundance. As we go out into the world, as we are just in our own homes, let us stop and look with the people around us. See them as Jesus saw that crowd and was so moved by compassion. Freely we have received. Let us freely give. Amen.
The three persons of the Trinity surround you. The hand of God keep you from all harm. The Spirit of God guide you in all joy. The Son of God delivers you to eternal life. Why don't we take uh, five minutes or so to say hello to everyone, then we'll go into our breakout groups for about 10 minutes just to talk.